showing the power that flows through the lemons. Uh, but in the sermon, we'll talk about self-control. And what I mostly want to tell you is that the way in which we interpret the Greek word that stands for self-control is a little bit misleading. The word is enkratia, and we translate it self-control, but when we say self-control, we tend to think of it as being able to control our emotions and not getting carried away and being calm and cool, and that's not really what enkratia means. Literally, it means having power inside of yourself. Having power. That's what enkratia is, and that's what the last gift of the Spirit is all about. And in a sense, it shouldn't be in that list of the nine fruits of the Spirit. It sort of stands apart because it qualifies all of the other gifts. When you come to that last one, enkratia, it is saying, and you have the power to have all of these gifts inside of you because God has put there God has empowered you and made you great. We know it's not just self-control in terms of keeping your emotions bottled up because scripture is all about wild emotions. In the story of Joseph, you have Joseph breaking down with emotion. In the story of David, you have David breaking down with the death of Absalom. In the story of the death of Lazarus, you have Jesus breaking down. We aren't people who want to control our emotions. In fact, you will look in the Bible stories and see that the greatest things are accomplished not by people who control their emotions, but by people who harness the power of emotions and direct them into solving problems and changing the world all around them. The word enkratia is most often applied to kings and athletes and soldiers. A king who comes to power and has the broad vision to look at his nation and say, what needs to be done to make my nation great? That king who controls his own impulse just to enjoy his power and sees that he has power to change a society. It is said of that king, he has enkratia, power within. What an athlete who is able to fix his eyes on the goal ahead and run straight for it, that again is a person with enkratea, or the soldier who defends what is right and good without being distracted, that soldier has enkratea. It is the power within. It is the attitude that says something is wrong, something needs to be done, and we're going to fix it. Enkratea, or self-power, in a sense, is best described by the term, get her done! <laughs> and there are people, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'll control myself. <laughs> there are people who have enkratea, the power to get it done, self-power. Now, I put a little prayer in the bulletin this morning. It's a prayer I think all of you have heard, but it ties into the idea of enkratea in a thousand different ways and places. It is the serenity prayer. Uh, and the important part of the serenity prayer is the very beginning of it. In fact, the rest may or may not have been written by the original author. And the serenity prayer simply says, God, give me the serenity. To accept those things I cannot change. The courage to change those things I can change. And wisdom to know the difference. And that prayer is connected into self-control. Mostly because after it was written, it was adopted by Alcoholics Anonymous as being a groundwork or a basis to give people strength to control their urges and to have a determining will in the midst of their own life. That application is perfectly acceptable and valid, but there is a deeper and more powerful reason why the serenity prayer is incredibly great for understanding 
understanding what self-control or self-power really is all about. The Serenity Prayer was written by a guy called Reinhold Niebuhr. Uh, Niebuhr was ordained as a Christian minister in the United States uh, in around 1918. Uh, he was sent into a church to work, and the church that he went to was in Detroit, Michigan. And Detroit at that time was famous for two things. Uh, number one, the Ford Motor Company. Ford owned Detroit. Ford owned everything and controlled a vast number of the people in Detroit. And secondly, Detroit was famous because it was the northern bastion of the Ku Klux Klan. There were 70,000 card-carrying members of the Klan in Detroit. Many of them were members of Reinhold Niebuhr's church. 